What's going on everybody? Welcome to the episode. I am super excited about today's episode. Probably more so than the videos I've done in the past few months, even more so than Tokyo Auto Salon uh, because I might have done a thing. And that thing is I finally found the car that I'm gonna take with me when I leave Japan. It is coming up on 25 years old. I've been hunting for a while and those that have been with the channel uh, since I had my Evo 4 or maybe even since I had my R33 GTR, shot myself in the foot should have kept the 33, hindsight's 2020. I bought the Evo from your car bro, my buddy Spencer, and uh, when I bought that car, I knew it was a 96, meaning that it wouldn't be 25 years old until November of 2021, and my time expires here in Japan uh, this summer, July of 2020. So when I bought that car, I knew it was gonna be a short-term car. I bought it because I really wanted an Evo. It was four doors. Uh, I got a good price on it, and I wanted, I wanted to kind of get into the Evo world and uh, see what they're all about. And then unfortunately, knowing that the car wasn't gonna be 25 years old, I had to sell it. So I sold it a while back, and I actually sold it back to Spencer and his wife. Now, since then, I think I sold it maybe May of last year, so it's been about 10 months. I haven't had a sports car. Those that have seen the Moto Vlogs, I got back on two wheels. I still have my Hayabusa, uh, but I've been driving my van. I've been kind of mobbing it around in the van, and as much fun as the van is, it's not the same. But I finally found the car, and I'm excited to show you guys, and uh, I'm in love with this thing. I actually bought it a week ago, and I've been keeping my mouth closed. I haven't really posted it on social media. I've been kind of holding it off, keeping it a secret for you guys, because I want to do the big reveal video. So here we are. So without further ado, let me turn this camera around and check out my new ride. And three, two, one, boom. There she is. Check it out, boys. Back in the Evo game. Evo 3. This is a 1995 Mitsubishi Evolution 3 and GSR in white. And I bought it off a fellow service member out here, like I said, about a week ago. And this video, I just want to talk about it. We're going to do a full walk around, check out the exterior, the interior, uh, see what's been done in the car, and talk about the future plans. So let's go ahead and get right into this thing. This is a CE9A chassis code, and they made the Evo 4s from 95 till 96, and only about 5,000 of them were ever made, so these cars are super, super rare. Uh, for those that don't know, Mitsubishi wanted to uh, put the Lancer into the WRC, and the rules kind of said, hey, you have to make X amount of vehicles actual road going vehicles to enter into the WRC. So what they did is with they with the Lancer, they made the Evo one uh, back in 92, I wanna say it was 92. And they only made a few thousand, I think 5,000 of those cars. And they were just like, hey, we're gonna make this car, we're gonna sell it so we can enter WRC. But just like you, I'm sure a lot of you and me, uh, you know, the Evo is a phenomenal car and people fell in love with it and bought them up immediately and they sold all 5,000 relatively quick. And then they came out the Evo 2, same thing. I'm pretty sure from what I read, those cars sold like the day the car came out, they were all gone. And then same thing with the Evo 3. And then the Evo 4, they ended up making, I think 10,000 Mitsubishi. It's like, okay, people like the Evo. We gotta make more, we gotta make more. So that's just a little Evo G was knowledge, but these cars are super rare. And think of all the ones that have been rallied, wrecked, right, you know. So I don't even know how many are still left in the world, but I will say I only see like just a few driving around here in Okinawa. Uh, I rarely see these cars, and I know in the States there's none right now. Uh, there will be a few here shortly, because it is a 95, but I'm hoping that I'm one of very few people in the States that have an Evo 3, a true Evo 3. I know people take Mirages and they do the conversions and whatnot, but a true right-hand drive Evo 3. Enough about me rambling. Let's walk around and check out the car. And I'll, I'll point out, all the flaws on the car. This is kind of a documentation video for me too, so I can look back and you know, as I do stuff to the car and kind of remember how the car was in its original state when I first got it. So there is definitely some paint damage. The front lip here is cracking. There's a lot of imperfections on it. The clear coat is pretty faded. The vents here look like they've been resprayed. The weather seals are actually in pretty good shape. And then we get to the trunk, the big eyesore right here. So Evo 3 has got the big wing and actually the wing, the spoiler, is in the trunk right now. And 
the previous owner took it off because it was rusting a little bit where the screws go right here. So he took it off, removed it, and then did like a little bit of Bondo work and just spray painted it, stopped the rust, and kind of just left it as is. So the spoiler's in the trunk. It is definitely an eyesore, but don't freak out. I went yesterday and got a paint quote from a reputable paint shop out here, and I already have an appointment. Not next week, but the week after, the car is going to the body shop and is getting a full-blown paint job with uh, some touches here and there, and we'll talk about that. But I do have a question. Spoiler or no spoiler? I mocked up the car with the spoiler, and it just screams Evo. Uh, I do like it without the spoiler, though. I'm kind of torn. Even like an Evo 8, Evo 9, the ones I see without a spoiler, I love them. But I feel like to keep the authenticity of the car, I got to get the spoiler put back on. So it's in good condition. And I, I already talked to the, the paint shop with the quote and the estimate. They said, hey, no problem. They're going to do everything. I'm going to go to Mitsubishi. I'm going to source some new Evo 3 badges here. It does have the factory exhaust on it. So I'm already searching on... Uh, Yahoo auctions and some different websites. It's really hard to find parts for these cars. Super hard. Every time you're searching Evo parts, you'll see Evo 4 through 9 or Evo 4 through 10. But 1, 2, and 3, very hard because they didn't make a lot of them. So there's not a lot of aftermarket support, but I will find it in exhaust. It just might have to be used from Up Garage or something like that. This is going to get touched up, but overall, not too, too bad. It's going to look like a completely different car. I'm actually keeping the same color. Scotia white. I think the paint code is W83, if I remember correctly. But I'm doing high gloss and the hood vents that are faded. I'm gonna have those painted black. I'm gonna go for a stormtrooper look on this car. White and black, two tone. So these will be black. This will be black. He said he might touch up the actual grill, black it out, and then black housing headlights. I already found those. And then I asked him about the Inkies. I was thinking about getting the, the actual wheels painted black, but the owner of the paint shop was like, no, these are good wheels. <laughs> I don't want to paint Enki. He's like, I'll, I'll clean them up and make them, make them look new for you. And I was like, okay, okay, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how they look. But these are Enki RP01s and they're 17 inches. And it's really hard to find wheels for these cars too, because the bolt pattern is four by 114.3. So it's a four hole. There's not a lot of wheel options out there compared to your five hole 114.3. Just kind of a strange lug pattern and uh, bolt size, I guess. All right, let's go ahead and pop the hood and see what's underneath. One of my favorite things about the car is the fact that it already has the Mitsubishi emblem right here. Those that have been with the channel for a while, you guys remember the scavenger hunt I was on to try to find those. I was going through junkyards. Uh, I found a few, but they weren't the right size for the Evo 4. So I finally bit the bullet and went to Mitsubishi and uh, had them order me one. That's the nice thing about Japan. You can actually go to the dealerships out here. I just say, hey, I got an Evo 3 CE9A and they'll give you a sheet of paper that has pretty much everything as far as like, they'll, they'll have the exterior paper, the interior, the engine, et cetera, and you just find the, the Mitsubishi part number and they give you a quote. They'll order it for you and it'll be out here. They'll give you a call like two days later and say, hey, your part's ready to come pick it up. So I'm definitely gonna take advantage of that before I leave here. Anything that I can get my hands on through Mitsubishi, I'm gonna order it because I know it's gonna be such a pain in the butt back in the States. I can't walk into a Mitsubishi dealership in the States and be like, hey, do you have Evo 3 parts? They're gonna look at me like I'm crazy. But here is the 4G63 in all of its glory. This looks similar to the 4G63, the DSM engine that was in the Eclipse and the Talon. You guys know what I'm talking about. So the cam gears are on this side as compared to the 4G63 in the Evo 4 through 9, which is on this side with the red top. But it does have factory forge internals. TD05 16G Turbo. I want to say this car puts out 250, 260 horsepower, something like that. I'll have to double check, um, but it is completely stock as far as performance goes. It's got the stock air box. Actually, it does have an HKS filter. I popped it open. It's got the green HKS filter in there, but that's not giving the car any power. It's got the stock diverter valve. Pretty much, I mean, this thing is, is stock straight through. The radiator appears to be somewhat new, new-ish. But plans for the engine, um, I'm going to probably do a blow-off valve uh, just because, I don't know, it's like the little kid inside of me still. 
Um, I'm going to see what's out there. I might do the Blitz again. That's what I had on my Evo 4. Sounded pretty good. And then uh, it does have coilovers. It has teen coilovers and the inky wheels and a Momo steering wheel. That's pretty much it for modifications to this car. Overall, I mean, it's a blank canvas for me right now. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to degrease it probably uh, this week or next weekend and do a full engine bay detail, make it look nice. And then with the paint quote, they're going to paint all this all around here. And then I'll get the, uh, the actual bonnet or hood cleaned up, degreased. But check it out. Still got the heat shields in pretty good condition. I mean, overall, for a 95, the car is in great shape. Great shape. And then the intercooler, I want to pull the intercooler off and polish up the piping or maybe paint it black. Not sure yet, but I'll definitely touch that up. And let's go ahead and check out the interior. I really like all the, uh, the auto back stickers on the inside of the door for all the services that have been done. When I first saw it, I was like, man, should I take those off? But I, I kind of dig them. I like them. Anyways, like I said, Momo steering wheel, not too bad. A little bit of wear and tear here and there. As far as the odometer goes, we're sitting at 161,073 kilometers, uh, just over 100,000 miles. It does have an aftermarket shift knob, though. I forgot to mention that. And one thing uh, in the short term I'm going to be looking for is a short shifter. The shift throws on this thing are pretty ridiculous, I'm not going to lie. Like from first to second, that's insane. Third, fourth, fifth, and then reverse is like way, way down here. So definitely looking at a short shifter. Uh, and the shift knob that I had in my GTR, I took out when I sold that car and I put it in my Evo 4, took that shift knob out and I'm going to put it in here. I just, I love it. It's a weighted shift knob and it's kind of sentimental to me just because I've had it in uh, all my cars, sports cars that I've owned out here. So has a factory radio AM FM with a tape player. It doesn't even have a CD player. Super cool. And it works. It tunes in. Uh, the speakers are pretty loud in this car. Everything works on the car. That's one thing I want to mention, like everything on this car works. I already did a modification too. I went ahead and got my JDM convex wide angle mirror. We'll go ahead and turn it on and uh, take a look at everything. And it's got the ETC, which uh, I love so much. I hate hearing that lady every time I turn the car on. I don't know what she says. Some of you guys might be able to translate it for me. Factory Recaros are actually in pretty good shape. There's no rips or tears. It's got the factory floor mats. Back seats are in really good shape. AC works nice and cold, like ice, ice cold. That was like a huge selling point for me. And then the power windows. And then the folding mirrors. Pretty much it guys, there's not a whole lot to it. Like I said, blank canvas right now. If it had an exhaust, I'd get an exhaust sound for you guys, but she just purrs. And I love the power antenna. What do you guys think? Comment below, let me know what you guys wanna see done to this car first. I'll take it with a grain of salt. Like I said, the paint, you guys are gonna see fresh paint on this car. Uh, like I said, two weeks I'm getting in. He told me it'll take two weeks to get everything painted. Once it's done with the paint, I'm gonna get window tint on it. And then after window tint, I think the next thing is gonna be an exhaust just so I get a little bit more sound coming out the back end. And then I'll start looking into, uh, probably the biggest thing first, honestly, is gonna be maintenance. Um, I don't know when the timing belt was last changed, so timing belt is definitely on the to-do list. I'm gonna change the plugs out. I'll do the oil probably this week. Um, the rear diff oil, the transmission oil, pretty much all the fluids, flush the, and bleed the brake system, get everything kind of annotated and documented and then kind of go from there before I start doing any performance modifications. And long term goals for the car, I just want to keep it clean, I want to keep it drivable, I don't want to go crazy, I know a lot of people are like, oh, go for like five, 600 horsepower, these cars can handle it. It's already light, like it's fun, it pulls, it boosts pretty nice, I've given it a, a few pulls here and there. I just think I want to make it look good and kind of retain the factory aspect of the car, if that makes sense. Uh, an exhaust, maybe an intake, so I get a little bit more turbo noises, maybe a blow off valve, maybe a tune with some bigger injectors and a, maybe a larger fuel pump and adjustable fuel pressure regulator, so I can get some pops and bangs going, but that's probably gonna be it. Maybe a, after, maybe a three inch turbo back exhaust, 
I don't know. We'll see how the turbo is. Maybe a different turbo, maybe a new turbo, but maybe keep it a, a 16G or maybe a 20G. I don't know, we'll see. But for now, I mean, this is gonna be a marathon, not a sprint. I just wanna get the paint done before I leave Japan and uh, have it kind of ready for Cars and Coffee. The next Cars and Coffee is gonna be May. So about a month and a half away right now. So hopefully the paint and everything will be done on that and uh, I'll have it prepped and ready to go for the actual car show. Cause it'll probably be my last Cars and Coffee out here in Japan. So I wanna make it a good one and I wanna show up in the new Evo, but I don't want it looking like this. So it'll definitely have fresh paint. And like I said, I'm gonna hit up Mitsubishi, see what they have, see what I can get ordered for the car and just kind of take care of it and baby it. And that's pretty much it for the Evo, guys. I'm excited. Sorry if you're still watching with my ramble. Like I said, it's more for documentation. Uh, hopefully you guys like it. This is definitely gonna be the face of the channel. This is gonna be the channel car. Uh, I'm hoping to have it long term. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, well, that's gonna do it for today's video. Thanks for watching, as always. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think. If there's any Evo 3 experts out there, if you guys know you know the quirks about the car or anything like that let me know i'm open ears i'm just excited to have a new car and this thing is a blast to drive it is super light and i can't compare it to the evo, evo 4 just yet i had the evo 4 for about a year and i love that car to death uh, i put that one through the ringer a few times on you know on some cruises hitting the twisty turns this one i've only kind of scooted around town here and there so i can't compare it directly but i will say that it drives nice it's super smooth it is quiet like, it's got factory exhaust and i'm not I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it's actually kind of nice. Um, but I do want to open it up and make it a little bit more sporty. So that'll be coming in the near future. With that being said, I will catch you on the next video. Later.